Hi everybody, it's Dave again, East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in beautiful Billings, Montana. We're going to continue our series on investigating different fly tying materials. In retrospect, I probably should have done this series first. We're going to talk about thread today. Thread is the most important fly tying material. Some of you may think that, no, you have to have a hook to tie a fly. Well, you don't. I've tied flies for wedding brooches on pins. I've tied flies on wire for a sculpture. Uh, so really, you don't need a hook, but you have to have thread to tie flies. And it's, this is going to be a, a pretty involved video because there's a lot to talk about. Uh, thread is complicating to many people, confusing to a lot of people. But I think once you get the basic facts, you'll be a lot more comfortable with it and be able to choose the right thread for the right fly. Because no one thread is best for all materials. And we'll talk about the different threads and their appropriate uses. But you do need to consider when you're tying a fly the size of the thread that you're using, like the diameter of it, its construction, what material it's made out of, um, if it's flat, if it's round, how it's wound. We'll talk about those things. So the strength of the thread, of course, you know, a thread for spinning deer hair is much different than a thread for tying a 20 parachute atoms. And then also the color. Different materials take colors differently, and we'll look at some of that. And there's no rule that says you have to use one thread for an entire fly. I teach a muddler, you know, uh, excuse me, a marabou muddler in my beginning fly tying class. And we used three different threads on that one fly because the different threads are appropriate for different uses. So I have a lot of notes here, so bear with me. Let's just talk a little bit about the history of thread. I think it's important to know where you've come from to appreciate what we have today. Uh, this history information comes from Erna Schweibert's two-volume set trout. Uh, horsehair was probably the first thread used. It's mentioned as early as the 1600s, and it was used for actual leaders as late as the 1940s. It was braided. It would use different numbers of strands of horsehair, so you can imagine the problems with using that. Silk was also the second fly tying material, although it wasn't the first in history. It was actually appeared in the Chu Dynasty in China, and this was from about 1000 to 700 BC. They cultivated silkworm moths and extruded the silk. Now, the silk didn't make it on the early caravans to Europe. It didn't really appear in Europe until about the 1800s but it was the only fly tying thread available for many, many years. And we'll talk about the properties of that just a little bit later. Now the nylon threads that we're used to today were actually developed during World War II for war use. It was first used in hosieries, women's hose, and bristles for brushes, and later used for many, many other things. Of course, plastics like nylon and polymer, there's an infinite number of variations on how it's made and all of that. Polypropylene is another plastic type of material. First of all, I want to give credit to a couple of authors and magazines that I have used for this background. The first one is an article by Charlie Craven, Applied in Fly, uh, Fly Fisherman magazine. I'm sorry I don't have the date. It's an excellent resource. It's a multi-page and uh, I have marked mine up thoroughly. So Charlie, thank you for trying to uh, dissolve some of the mysteries and the confusion about threads. I also used an, another article by Al Ritt that appeared in uh, Fishing and Fly, Fly Fishing and Tying Journal. He talks a lot about the different strengths of thread as well. So again, for these two authors, thank you. I hope you don't mind me using your materials. The first thing we're going to talk about is sizing of thread. There are two different systems and they're not compatible. The first is the aught system, 3 aught, 6 aught, 8 aught, like you've seen on some brands of threads. This is actually an outgrowth of surgeon silk that was originally used for sutures. And again, it's, it's silk thread. Uh, it's about 3-0 is about the heaviest, and uh, they did use sizing dies to size this thread to different diameters. And uh, the aught system is based on diameter. 
It's not standardized, unfortunately, between manufacturers. One aught, three aught thread might be a different diameter than the standard used by another manufacturer. Once you get used to a brand of thread, you'll see that the three aught, six aught, eight aught decrease in diameter. So in the aught system, the larger the number, the smaller the diameter of the thread. All right, but again. It doesn't cross-pollinate between different manufacturers. It's very much like hooks. Each manufacturer has their own standard hook, and then they deviate from that. The other system is the denier system. It's first, it was first used in the textile industry that makes thread, and it's based on the weight of a standard length of thread. If I remember right, it's something like 7,000 meters and the number of grains in that weight of thread. So it's a different system, but it does indicate the relative size of the thread. For example, 140 denier is twice as heavy as 70 denier. 70 denier is similar to 8 aught thread. And we'll look at some different threads, and again, you'll see that the denier and the aught system don't exactly correlate but they do make sense within their own systems. All right, the strength, and again, this was from Al Witt's article, generally increases at the th as the thread diameter increases. It can vary. The six aught of one manufacturer's thread may not be as strong as the six aught of another manufacturer's thread. It depends a lot on what the thread was made of, whether it's polyester, nylon, uh, Kevlar, GSP. Polyester typically is stronger than nylon. It doesn't stretch as much as nylon. Polyester is used in uni thread. Nylon is used in UTC brand of thread. Kevlar thread, which is made used for bullet, uh, weaving bulletproof vests, used to be the toughest thread out there. Now we have GSP, which is gel spun polyethylene and it is the strongest thread on the market today and I'll give you some comparisons as far as breaking strengths as we go along. All right, nylon thread. This is UTC's thread. Danville also makes a nylon thread. It is pre-waxed. It's not quite as strong as polyester for its diameter. It stretches about 25 to 30 percent but you will find that it's very useful for a lot of things. So this is some UTC thread, 210 diameter. If you look at it, you can see it's made of many fine, let's see if I can get it separated here, many fine strands of nylon, okay? It does fray fairly easily. That's one of my uh, bugaboos about it, if you have rough hands. But it is very slick, and, and I find it hard to dub, much harder to dub than polyester threads. So again, it's something to consider. If your fly is going to require a lot of dubbing, I would not use a nylon thread like UTC. It's just too slick to hold the dubbing. It does come in very vibrant colors. Polyester thread tends to be a little duller in colors. For example, here's a polyester versus the nylon thread. So you can see the colors are a little more vibrant on nylon thread than on polyester. It does split easily. If you like to do split thread dubbing loops, um, you can use UTC thread. And the UTC comes in 70, 140, 210, and 280 denier. The 70 is like 8 aught, the 140 is like 6 aught, the 210 is heavier, and the 280 is heavier yet. And here's a characteristic of UTC that I wanted to show you. As you start from the spool, you can see that it's very flat. And it, as you wrap it, it stays flat for a while. But as you twist the thread, as you wrap, you can see how this thread starts to cord up and become thicker and heavier in diameter. It actually increases in diameter by about 40% but it also increases in strength too. You have more thread per unit. But the nice thing about these types of thread, if you're right-handed, all you have to do is spin the thread counterclockwise to take that, that um, spin out of it. And you can see, you can wrap it flat once again. 
and I try to teach my fly tying students to use the quality of your threads. If you're doing a thread body, certainly you want it flat. But if you're tying in head materials that have maybe deer hair or something like that where you want more strength and you want more bite, then simply twist that thread, cord it up as I call it, and then you can get more strength from that same thread. All right, the next type of thread is made from polyester. Pardon me here. I grab another hook. This is the Uni um, brand that we're going to first talk about. Let me back up just a second. On the nylon thread, typical breaking strengths is 70 denier, which is uh, the lightest thread UTC makes, has a breaking strength of about 15 ounces. You need to keep that in mind based on the material. A 140 is about 35 ounces or double that. The 210 is 55 ounces and the 280 is very similar as far as breaking strength. So again, depending on the diameter of thread, it has different uses. All right, back to uni thread. It is also a wax thread. It's made in Canada. It's a polyester. It's slightly heavier in cross section than um, a nylon thread but it is not made of individual fibers. Instead, it's braided. And I'll show you an example. For example, here's UTC thread. And again, this is from Charlie's article. You can see how flat it is and that it has a binder strip around it at intervals. So this is what allows, allows it to lay flat. This is Vivas thread, which we'll talk about a little bit later. It's a polyester thread. It's a twisted strand. Uni thread is also a twisted strand, although it does have a binder strip around it as well. It's used during the manufacture just to make it easier to fact manufacture it. It does have a very round cross section, but again, as you wind this thread, you can see that just like UTC, it starts to cord up, get thicker and heavier and stronger. It does not flatten quite as well as a nylon thread like UTC, but it does flatten some. So in that respect, it's not unusable. I do like this more than nylon for dubbing, for tying in something like hair, because it tends to bite the materials better than a slicker nylon hair does. Again, the colors aren't quite as vibrant as a nylon thread, but they do come in a lot of colors. Uni makes their thread in what they call the big fly, which is pretty close to what I call monocord. They make it in 3 aught, 6 aught, 8 aught, and they also make it all the way down to what they call canis and trico. The, uh, for example, the 6 aught thread has a breaking strength of 22 ounces. A comparable thread would be the UTC in 140 denier, and that's 35 ounces. The Canis thread, for example, is a 20 denier, has a breaking strength of about 4 ounces. So if you really want to try a tiny, tiny thread, that's the, that's the smallest thread on the market, and it doesn't take much more than bobbin pressure to break that thread. So they do come in a variety of sizes. Another polyester thread is Vivas thread. Now it's, it's a Danish thread. It's the only thread available that's not waxed except for the Danville unwaxed thread. It's the newest thread on the market. It is round and cross section. Again, I'll show you this plate. Vivas is a very unique thread. Um, it's very slightly twisted. The larger threads do have a binder. The smaller threads don't. It does flatten up nice or it cords nice. The thing I like about Vivas, now this is 16 aught Vivas, but it still has a breaking strength of 15 ounces. So it's a remarkably strong, that didn't work very well, it's a remarkably strong thread for its size. The 6 8, 6 aught, 8 aught, and 10 aught thread are actually rated by the company as a 110 denier. How they do that, all with the same construction, I have no idea. The 12 and 14 aught are rated as 70 denier, which is the same as a 7 or an 8 aught thread in the uni or 70 UTC. 
It, uh, again, it doesn't have as many as colors, as vibrant colors as a nylon thread because it is polyester. My only, my only beef about Unith or Viva's thread is that all the, the colors don't come in all the size ranges. But Tom, sometimes they will skip a thread size uh, in a, a particular color and come back with a smaller thread size. Why they do that, I have no idea. But I do wish that they'd change that. And Vivas does also make a wide range of threads. They make a power thread in 140 and 240 denier. And then a normal thread all the way from 6 aught down to 16 aught. They also make a line of GSP threads, which we'll talk about here very shortly. I did want to show you the difference in here's uni thread. You can see how tightly it wraps and how it cords up. And then again, next to it, we have UTC. The nylon thread starts out very flat, but then rounds up as you wrap it. And again, you can simply flatten it by un untwisting the bobbin. So those are a couple of characteristics, something to be aware of with these two kinds of thread. Now, Kevlar thread used to be the strongest thread out there before GSP. And believe me, if you pull on this hard, you will cut your hands. It does have a breaking strength of about 69 ounces, so it's a very tough thread. And it's actually my choice when I need a tough thread. It lies flat. It's only available in what they call a 200 de denier, so it's a fairly heavy thread. But I like it for spinning deer hair. It takes about uh, you know four or five pounds of pressure to spin deer hair, and this is very capable of it. And um, I like it because, and I'll show you GSB, it, even though it has individual filaments, it has kind of a waxy coating, so it doesn't tend to fray on your hands like GSP does. Comes in seven colors. Um, the problem with Kevlar is it does not take dye well, and it tends to shed that dye in your bobbin. And if you put head cement on it, typical lacquer head cement, the color will bleed. If you're making a big head with Kevlar, I'll say on a streamer fly, that can be a concern. Just use a double whip finish. On a smaller headed fly, I really don't think that that's an issue. Kevlar and GSP are, are both very difficult threads to cut, as you would expect from body armor thread. Uh, I find Kevlar a little easier to cut than GSP. But I simply use a razor or the Weiss type scissors that have the double razor size blades to cut it with. Don't use your good scissors to cut Kevlar or GSP. It'll very quickly dull them. Now we're going to talk about GSP. GSP, as I said before, is gel spun polyethylene. It's a very different plastic than nylon or polyester. Vivas supplies it in 30, 50, 100, 150, and 200 denier, and in black or white. Like hair, or just like um, Kevlar, GSP does have a tendency to run colors. As you can see, it's made up of many, many multiple filaments. So very much like UTC thread, it tends to fray if you have rough hands but it does come in a variety of the different deniers. For example, the 30 denier has a breaking strength of 25 ounces. You go up to the 200 denier and it can be over 250 ounces. You can virtually put as much pressure on these threads as you like. Wapsi also has their line of GSP threads. Uh, many of them are colored. If you use a ceramic bobbin, I, I know from experience, I would suggest you do not use a ceramic bobbin when using colored GSP thread because the dye does tend to wipe off on the bobbin. Before you know it, you've got a clogged bobbin and it's very difficult to clean. Semper Fly also makes a line of Nano Silk, which is GSP thread. This is an 18 knot. It's extremely fine, but it is very, very strong. Um, like I said, GSPs are slick, very hard to dub. They fray easily if your hands are rough, so be aware of that. If you're going to use them to spin deer hair, which is an excellent application, make sure you're using at least 100 denier or heavier GSP thread. The lighter hairs will cut through that thread as you're spinning it. It'll cut it just like a razor. 
so make sure you use heavier threads. And this GSP threads are mostly used for streamers and things like that where you really need a lot of thread tension and a lot of thread strength to keep bulky materials on the hook. All right, we also have monofilament thread. And like it stated, it is actually a single strand of clear monofilament. Monofilament is very slick thread. Uh, I find it difficult to tie with, difficult to tie knots with because it is slick. The knots tend to unwind and it twists fairly easily as you're wrapping it. It is available in 0.004 and 0.008 millimeters and the and a 0.004 has a 25 ounce breaking strength. The 008 has 81 ounce, so it's a fairly strong thread. And you use it when you want the thread to disappear on a particular fly that you're tying. Let's talk about silk thread a little bit. We still can get silk thread. It's imported from England. It comes both as thread and floss. Silk thread is about a three aught in diameter, but and it's not all that strong as you saw. But it's a traditional thread used to tie soft hackles. The reason is that when wet, silk thread darkens a little bit and it's, it becomes fairly translucent. So it gives a nice 3D effect when you're tying soft hackle flies. I always use the UTC fluorescent white thread as an under base before I tie silk. If you don't, then as the silk darkens, it'll be the color of the hook, regardless of the color of the silk that you use. If you use a fluorescent white thread underneath, then the true color of the silk shows through. And I have tied flies down to as small as 16 size flies with silk thread. So it's not impossible to use, but it is a little bit bulky. It is a traditional thread, and if nothing else, it'll show you how far we've come in the smaller threads that we now have available. Silk floss is also available in the shop here. It too is made out of silk, but you can see it's, it's a much larger thread, and it's only used for ribbing. That's it, folks. That wraps it up. I hope you didn't find it too confusing. Please, if you can, get these two articles from Charlie Craven and Al Ritt and study them, and it'll make your selection of tying threads not only easier, but you'll be using the right threads for the right materials. Happy tying. We'll see you next time.